Have you ever wanted to go to countries like I do, see exotic places and meet new people? In each trip, he not only got to see all of the major sites, but he got to take detours off the trail with his guide and got to see amazing things that most travelers miss. Stay tuned for our video to find out how. <laughs> so Adam, you have a practice of hiring or hooking up with a local when you travel abroad. So let's talk a little bit about that. And another country you visited in Africa was Djibouti, and you had, uh, that's where you went to see the chimneys. I think you had, you said Ali and Mohammed were your guides there? That's, uh, they speak French and Arabic there. And maybe the one guide spoke some English. Djibouti was a, a rough country to travel with. I had some problems, but the, those guides were good. It went well with them. Otherwise, it would, I think the whole country would have been a bust. Really? Had not really the, my trip with them went well. That kind of made it all come together. I had no problems with them. Except for the vehicle breaking down several times <laughs> and changing a lot of tires. And oh, wow. It seemed like pieces, pieces of the vehicle were kind of just barely hanging on, rattling around. But yeah, we were, for a few days, we went to several locations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was like these stone chimneys. There's like this geothermal, otherworldly kind of like uh, steam coming up, some salt flats, some different lakes, and uh, lots of wildlife and camels. That was a pretty extreme. And just slip, sleeping in like those uh, hot, kind of like tent sort of things. Mm hmm. With Djibouti with them, I was really glad I pulled that part off. It didn't seem like Djibouti was going to work out. It seemed like I heard like filming was illegal in some ways. So we had to get like really the heck out. Like I'd be arrested if I was seen anywhere taking video. And as you know, I had problems kind of getting robbed at the airport. The airport. Coming in, yeah. going. That's terrible. Okay, let's shift to Asia, because you've been to a number of really interesting countries in Asia. Let's start with Indonesia. So Indonesia, you went to Mentawai, where Levi was your guide. Do you remember that? Right. Yeah, Indonesia was a, a great experience. So I flew into Jakarta and then flew again to Sumatra. And then the main city is Padang in Sumatra. Mm -hmm. So I was at a real cheap hotel and he's just, uh, there's these young guys like hanging out in the lobby, you know, because they need to make a buck. Uh -huh. And Levy was one of the people and negotiated with him, Levy Mentwai. And he's of this tribe. Mentwai is this really, really old, old tribe, like way in the, on an island in the jungle. Oh, neat. And he's one of them and, and took me out there. And I have a lot of footage. And we stayed at, I have the video it's these shaman brothers, Toy Cot and Cookie. I like that. And we stayed in them. Yeah, and they were like pig farmers. I hired them to do a healing ceremony of different like ailments. So it was, yeah, real neat experience staying in the jungle with them. And yeah, I got really close with Levy. Neat. Neat. And you're still friends with a lot of these guides, right? Right, yeah, I keep in contact with almost all of them. That's cool. So to talk to them with this video too, like if you want any of these people you want. Lalo, Levy, Jonathan, Willie, I have their numbers. Jose in Argentina, Moreno, he, Jose will do Europe on the cheap and stuff like that too. Like you can hire any of these people. I'll just give you their WhatsApp numbers, or their Facebook, their Instagram, anything you need, you know. And, and they come highly recommended. Yeah. And I'm not taking a cut. I just want to help them out. That's what a lot of us, like, that's why I hired, like, I want them to do well and I want them to be hired and get more business. Right, right. And you'd rather pay them directly than go through a large company, a large tour company. This way, these, these guys can build their own business. Yeah, they're working for themselves. If you hire the big brochure tour company, then they take a lot, most of the money and then they hire like, a, they subcontract like another guy who subcontracts another guy. And then the guy you get in the end is probably the same local guy that I would have in the anyway. first place. <laughs> so I'd rather have that person get all the money than then the company and the middleman taking all their cuts out of it. So if you can talk directly to the person, the local that you're going to hire to do it, then it's really good for them because then they get, they're going to give you a much better price and then they get most of the money. The big company takes, you know, they just get like a frack. In most cases, like, you know, the big company is going to take like more than half or 80% right. of the money. Right. And it's just trickle down. They get like a few bucks of their own out of it in the end. Right. And if they do a good job, you're also really conscientious about tipping well. Yes. We want to be the Americans who, who tip well. Right. And represent our country well. Yes. Because in some countries, there isn't really tipping at all. So right. then they're really happy when you, they get like a tip. It's even, you know, it's even more income for them. And it encourages them to do well. 
you know, we had a good day with Jonathan. I give him a, a good tip and I tell him what we're looking for for the next day, and he'd he'd find that animal or whatever. It just looked amazing. And you also get a rhythm going because then they're encouraged. They know that you're you're having a good time, and they got a good tip. And and then the next day you want to go out and have another good time. And see incredible things. They're all amazing too. The really good ones are sizing you up in a good way. Like they want to see what you want. Like some people want more right. comfort or with me, they're like, oh, this is what he wants to see. I would just tell Jonathan, like, I want to see more cats. Like I hadn't seen a lot of cats. Like I've been on safaris and I'd seen tons of elephants. It's like, okay, like it's great to see the elephants. I'll see them a bit, but I don't really want to focus on seeing elephants. 30 years ago, I really loved watching monkeys but there's monkeys, if you travel around, there's monkeys all over the place. You get sick of like monkeys. And be like, <laughs> you'll be in your room and the monkeys will be trying to come in the window and steal your stuff and everything after a while. You just kind of, you've had enough footage of monkeys or whatever. It's just not even interesting anymore. And you had actually lived in Africa for a short period of time while you were teaching. That's so right. Already, yeah, I was teaching in Zambia. So you already seen elephants. You'd already seen some rhinos, a lot of zebras. Yeah. You're ready to see like, what is it, the big five or the big three? Yeah, the big five. The big five. So the big five is what? Elephant, rhino, leopard, lion. cheetah, lion. So the cats you fives. haven't seen yet. Yeah. Yeah, I've been on many safaris and I'd always unluckily missed the cats. So we can't forget Papua New Guinea. And who was your guide in Papua New Guinea? Papua New Guinea was a very amazing experience. I had no guide flying in and then my ride didn't pick me up and I got into some trouble. Where I was kind of taken away by the rascals. We're gonna oh, gosh. get like a big gang. I, I mean, I had to get trust somebody to drive me out of the hotel. I mean, out of the airport because my hotel ride that I organized did not come. So I ended up with the wrong person. And luckily, I had the along the way a pastor gave me his phone number if I was ever in trouble. So I called that pastor, Pastor Peter. Mm -hmm. And he came and rescued me out of the most dangerous part of Port Moresby. And then he was looking after me for the rest of it. So then he set me up with another pastor that was in Garoka. Mm -hmm. And then that guy was looking after me. And I saw many wonderful tribes and everything. And then I helped fund things with his church where there was an outreach and I went across the country with Pastor James, and we saw many incredible things, and he negotiated the prices for things, and it was just, yeah, just wonderful with the really, uh, I don't know if I want to call them primitive tribes that we saw. We went to a place, WeWAC, and he was busy with his outreach, so I met some other locals that were related to the person who I was staying with, and that was uh, Michael and Joey. Mm -hmm. And we went up the Sepik River, which is even more remote than like the Amazon. I mean, we really went way out there and saw the crocodile people and the crocodile ceremonies and the, the spirit houses. And there was no ATM machines. And so after a while, I spent all the cash I had. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's amazing to be like, I was like I'm sorry, guys, like I, I spent all my money. And I took, <laughs> you know, before I left, like we were, like, I was hitting the machine for as much money. But I think there's like a maximum amount. You can take every, out every day. So I was, I was just taking out more and more and more. And I was uh -huh. like, that's it. Like no more money. I was like, ah. So it was a really funny feeling to like have you somewhere where no credit cards work. And, they, and what did you guys They were just like, that's fine. We'll take care of it. It was like, it was like no big deal. You know, it was like, wow. I was like their friend at that point. So like then it wasn't, I couldn't even pay for things towards the end of it, which was just really incredible. But what a strange feeling to have, yeah, to be somewhere, no money, no ATMs, no credit cards, no nothing. But then we were just like sleeping in shacks and stuff where we had the canoes. And uh, so I kind of forced the one guy to go all the way back to civilization with me. And then I did tip him really well. Like in retrospect to all the, that I owed him <laughs> for all the time that they were wow. doing everything, you know, helping me out for nothing. Wow. That was very nice of them. Those were some nice guides. So some of them, yeah, they weren't like really guides. In the first, they were just like friends, friends of this family I was staying with who were just like helping me out. And then I was paying for the, the gasoline for the outboard motor for the canoe and everything. People in here are very good people. Yeah, they are good people. Yeah, they look after uh, such people like you. I know, everybody's always protecting me and watching after yeah, me. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. You guys are very helpful, very kind. Yeah, very kind and helpful. And you have an awesome culture. Yeah, <laughs> they need such people like you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's why they helpful and kindful. Yes. Did 
Didn't you have an interesting experience meeting up with the guides at night? You thought that they were maybe attacking oh, you yeah. or something. Oh, that was so interesting. Yeah, it was Joey and Michael. <laughs> Because Pastor there. James, like, I had to leave WeWAC, and they just put me on the bus. And, yeah, Papua New Guinea is, like, a rough kind of place. Like, people people are surprised. Like, you don't really go around on your own. <laughs> Usually you have a lot of protection. So, anyhow, like, I get off the bus. It, it was still at nighttime, so the sun hadn't risen yet. And then off by the Sepik River, I was supposed to, like, I don't know, I got out of the vehicle. And, of course, they know, like, he's the only white guy. They're, like, looking for me. So it's even dangerous for them. So when they left their village out on the Sepik River, they uh, they brought protection. They brought like the big meat cleavers with them <laughs> to protect themselves because you don't like like in Africa plus like you don't go out at night. So they're they had to be out at night to meet you. Yeah. So they're looking for me, and then uh, and then I noticed that they were hiding these big meat cleavers behind their back, <laughs> like this. I see this so it's these two black guys, like, you know, like a radical, like, but then that's just me that I knew they weren't like, a, you know, and they kind of look like scary representatives, but they're both hiding, like, they, like so you would think like you're going to be killed. Like it's two guys looking like, and they're obviously hiding these giant knives, like a meat cleaver. And a, yeah, they had the biggest knives they could pull out of their mom's drawer before they came. <laughs> and I think like, yeah, you might, you would jump out of your like, wait, those guys got, got knives, knives behind them. <laughs> it was like, ah, no, it's like, I understand. Like. You know, you need that to protect yourself, you know. <laughs> it's like sizing up the situation Wouldn't many experience. times <laughs> where Wouldn't I didn't freak out on that. Yeah, Wouldn't that was a good one. I forgot about that. <laughs> that was one where you told me that story and I thought I was so glad I wasn't there because I would have just been, you know, probably freaking out and not helpful mm -hmm. to you at all. And you were able to size it up and, and not freak out. Yeah. Papua New Guinea was rough. That was one of the, and I knew it going in, yeah, that it was going to be dangerous and just really rough. You're not stuck with just doing package tours. That's not the only option. Thanks for watching.